I think, you know, I, I, and again, like anything that we have an unhealthy relationship with can exacerbate that, right? Um, I've also seen social media used as a very powerful mm. tool of support, you know, um, where it's been life-saving for people. Um, so it's, like like anything, you know, yeah. you know, anything in, ex, in excess is not good, right? It's that balance. That's so funny that back kind of back to the uh, Tika Thornton is her name, uh, the human trafficking survivor mm. that we, we chatted with earlier. Yeah. We were also talking about social media and because it's being used as a tool for evil, right, to, to for traffickers to find their victims yeah. online now. But yeah. at the same time, the Internet's also being used to get the word out there, right. help raise awareness. So. Yeah. Yeah. There's a duality to yeah. it. You know, I mean, we have we have a huge social media community. Um, at no stigmas and there's a great deal of support that happens there um, but it can also be used as a way to hide and to not interact in the real world right I think that all the time with so we're you know we're on Twitter a lot um, for the show mm -hmm. and I think of Twitter I think Twitter is especially kind of toxic and I a lot of the users there are anonymous mm -hmm. they don't use their real names you know they use their real uh, photos yeah and you know they're just going off they're just ranting about whatever they are and I, I just think like not even knowing anything about these people that this can't be healthy for your mental state yeah. like if this is what you're doing every day that cannot be good. absolutely yeah and I, I kind of I think it's the equivalent of like water cooler gossip, you know, or like high school gossip, mean girl gossip, yeah. right? That kind of stuff. Um, I think it exists in a lot of different forms. Um, it's just the medium, you know, that, mm -hmm. that it's being expressed. And in, in, in any case, this, you know, overcritical mm -hmm. um, type of, you know, culture where people are allowed to be bullies, essentially, um, is not healthy for right. anyone. Um, you know, and certainly um, not those who are on the receiving end, um, but those who are, you know, perpetuating it, um, there's a reason why they're acting out like that. There's a reason right. why they're bullying people. And it generally has to do with a lot of insecurity and a lot of overcompensation for things, um, which unfortunately is is generally a result of some type of adverse childhood experience or some type of trauma that they experience and they are perpetuating what they've learned and they're putting it out there in, in an unhealthy way, you know? And so every bully is also a victim. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I think that's important to recognize um, that, you know, we have to also, while the, while the behavior is not acceptable and we, it's not to be tolerated, um, we should also have some compassion for people mm -hmm. who are in those circumstances too. Do you think, well, first of all, let me ask, it, did I hear correctly that the, the anxiety, depression, suicide rates in youth and teenagers is on the rise? Yeah. And, you know, and again, that goes back to the, the earlier discussion is, is it on the rise or do, do we know about mm. it more? Are more people reporting? Are we, you know, so, so the numbers are going up, right? Um, but, but again, you know, are, do we know more about mm. that? Now, actual completions, um, is the same debate because when someone completes suicide, you know, now in this environment, we're more likely to know that it was suicide. Whereas in the past, it was more likely to be swept under the rug. So there are a lot of suicides that are happening that perhaps weren't, um, categorized as a suicide. Mm. Um, I was on a panel, um, recently in, um, at a yoga festival in Grand Junction, Colorado, um, which has a very high suicide rates, very high youth suicide rates. And the community has really um, taken a step up to combat that. And, um, and I, I think it's really admirable what they're doing in this small community. And, um, but one of the panelists um, was a neurologist, and um, she was talking about the fact that there are um, there's a disproportionately high number of suicides that happen among medical professionals. Um, I've just heard of the, become aware of this fact. Yeah. And I mean, if, if you think about the lifestyle, if you think about the pressure, if you think about, you know, yeah. you know, everything that goes into it, um, 
coupled with being in an environment where you are expected to be strong and a caregiver and not to show, you know, uh, to be infallible, right? And all of that is, um, leads to an environment where they're living with these things and not actually dealing with it. And then coupled with the fact that they have access to means, right? Complete access, um, whether it's, you know, prescriptions or otherwise, um, or just knowing how the human body works. And so, um, you know, as she said, we, we just don't know how many doctors die by suicide. Um, and certainly in the past, when it was something that would have been covered up, we have no idea. Mm. So um, in any case, I think, you know, regardless of why the numbers are going up, um, personally, I see that as a good thing. Um, in the in the way that um, it's creating more awareness of an issue that has existed for a long, long time and is highlighting the fact that we need to do something about it, that mm -hmm. we need to be proactive about it. So, um, you know, I they as they say, you know, things tend to get worse before they get better. Mm -hmm. um, so if the numbers um, are going up, that that means hopefully that as a society, we're going to start to do more, um, which will in turn see those numbers go down. What are your thoughts on, I think it's called the Werther effect, the uh, suicide copycats. Mm. Um, I've heard a lot of people criticize the way that news outlets cover high profile suicides like celebrities or sure. TV shows depicting suicide saying that apparently Google search for suicide went up right after these shows or whatever. Yeah. What are your thoughts on yeah. that? I mean, so, and of course, like, I'm, I'm speaking as a lay person, right? I'm, I'm not speaking as um, someone who, you know, has an advanced degree or mm -hmm. a bunch of letters after my name. Um, <laughs> we can add someone. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wonder what my numbers would, what my letters, letters would just, be. Just pick three. We'll <laughs> capitalize the first one. Jacob Moore. They'll buy it, yeah. X, Y, Z. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Um, so... I think here's, here's the thing is, um, suicide is a very, um, personal experience, a very personal choice. And, and, and ultimately, you know, it comes down to what state someone's in, right? So if someone is, um, someone is either suicidal or they're not talking about it is not going to make them more suicidal. Um, Asking someone if they're suicidal is not going to put the idea into their head. And there have been many studies that have proven this. So talking about it in the news shows like 13 reasons why mm -hmm. um, aren't making someone suicidal. Now, is it giving someone an idea on how to complete suicide? That's a different debate. Um, is our media outlets talking about these things responsibly, making sure that people have the resources that they need, the support that they need? That's a different debate. Um, but simply talking about suicide, um, I think creates awareness and creates an environment where people can get more help, can get more support. So, um, you know, so the idea that like, you know, someone, you know, hears about Kate Spade and then is like, well, I'm going to go do that too. You know, that's, that's just, it's not how it works. Mm -hmm. It's not how the, the, the brain works, you know? What do you think about um, really young cases? I mean, I, I heard of cases of eight-year-olds yeah. committing suicide. Very and I, I feel like when I was eight, I mean, I couldn't, not that I exactly remember, and maybe I would just had a sheltered childhood. I don't even know if I knew what suicide was at eight, that taking my own life was an option. Yeah. That's such, it's such a, a complex mm -hmm. thing. You know, I think, A, I mean, even the people who study these things don't know a lot about why, don't know a lot about, you know, what's creating that, you know, that situation. Um, there's, so there's there's kind of like a, a couple of camps, um, one that is more centered around the the genetic component, and you know and, and 
by the way, genetics, um, certainly like we're, we all have a genetic code, mm -hmm. um, but they're, they're influenced very much by the environment, you know, that, that we grow up in, right? Um, the situation that we're born into. So, um, so there's some that really believe that there's, there's that component that, um, you know, is something that's passed down in the brain chemistry that, you know, um, kind of has that drive to complete suicide. Um, and then, you know, there's, there's sort of the other, you know, this is sort of nature versus nurture theory, mm -hmm. you know, stuff, um, where, you know, the environment that someone lives in, um, you know, whether it's the media or, you know, the home environment or, you know, the, um, the food that exposes us to chemicals, that exposes us to hormones and to things that make our brains work differently, right? So like I said before, if, you know, dairy affects my mood, it affects mm -hmm. my anxiety. Um, so what happens when there's a little one who maybe has those sensitivities, those allergies that, um, you know, that exacerbate those, you know, those situations. So I suspect it's probably a combination of all of it, you know, that it's, it's part of that genetic makeup, part of that environment, part of what we're, we're putting into our bodies that's, that's creating this, mm -hmm. you know. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching the episode. If you're interested in contributing to the conversation and supporting the show, there's two easy things you can do. One, click subscribe. And two, visit our Patreon page where you get exclusive access to the Exploring Minds community.